Hey guys, it's Catherine, and I'm here for another watercolor painting. So, we're all stuck in quarantine, including me, so I decided to get out of the house and go to my local park to do this painting. This is something I like to do to get new ideas and stay fresh-minded while having a sense of calm. I love to go outside and paint. It's one of my favorite things to do, but I rarely get to do it, so I thought I'd take the opportunity. And I'm just starting this painting by doing a blue underpainting. Um, I'm planning on having the skin tone be pretty orangey, so I thought I'd offset that orange with a blue underpainting. You can choose any color, really, including uh, the most popular is green, or you can do straight up gray to establish those shadows and then layer color over it. I always pretty much do a blue tone. Here it started raining so I had to head home, but I continued working outside because I think that's so beneficial for so many reasons. So now I'm just continuing doing that underpainting and developing the shadows and the darks. Here's the actual underpainting of the skin. I use a transition color that is orangey and offsets the blue but is still pretty off-tone and not too sharply orange. And I layer it pretty much over the entire thing except for the highlights. I like to go over the blues to make sure they're not so intense and make sure the highlights are separated from the darks and the transition color. This is just layering and layering. It's the most important part of watercolor painting for me. And some papers don't actually allow you to layer so dramatically like I do. Something I like to use for this is Arches watercolor paper. I use hot press to make sure it's nice and smooth so I can get good gradients. But I use Arches because once you do a brush stroke on Arches, it kind of seeps in and sticks. So there's not so much lift and that's a good thing and a bad thing. Sometimes it's really hard to fix mistakes, but it also is permanent and layering is much easier. So right now, the skin tone is looking very cool. It needs some warmth and something to make it more alive, so I like to do a wash of a rosy or orange color on the cheeks and nose. It's something that really makes the skin tone warmer and subtracts from the cool undertone. So here I am adding some blue to the whites of the eyes. Something that you will hear from any artist is that the whites of the eyes are never actually white. They always have some sort of shadow to make it look more deep set in the face and also less animated and cartoony. Here I'm going in with that blue underpainting for the hair like I did before, but using longer strokes and making the hair straight while still having some waves so it's not like flat, but also not doing strand by strand. I like to use big strokes that are very confident and pointed. And I don't really show it in this video, but after I do the underpainting of the blue, I go in with a yellow skin tone color. So I make a skin tone by using the yellow, orange, and a slight touch of blue with a lot of water to make it less pigmented. Then I add a bit more yellow so I have a hair color for blonde hair. And then I overlay that over the blue and it looks very green at the start. But I keep layering it and keep layering it over that blue to prevent it from becoming too green and keeping it pretty much blonde. I like to add some bits of orange too to make sure that it doesn't look blue and there's no blue showing through. I also added some dark roots at the top of her head to make it look like her hair was bleached and then grew out a little bit. I've never really done this before, so I don't really know how well it turned out, but it's something unique that I thought I'd try. So here's just the final painting. I hope you guys are staying safe out there. Keep doing art, keep staying active. So thank you guys for watching. See you next time.